Hello friends, welcome to the course Basics of Computer Network. In this course, uh, we will discuss different basic things which are required to understand computer network concept. So, this video uh, will explain you the topic Fundamentals of Data Communication and Computer Network. Myself, Anirudha Talole, lecturer in Computer Technology Department. So, let us start our video. So these are the contents of our video. Uh, we will go through with the concept what is, what do you mean by a process of data communication and its components, then which are different modes of communication, then we will go through with some uh, certain uh, definitions or the fundamentals of computer network and finally we will have the classification of network. So next uh, we move to the actual point of uh, today's session and that is nothing but what do you mean by exactly a data communication so it is a process we can say it is a process of using a computing and communication technologies to transfer data from one place to another so keep in mind a data communication uh, consists of transferring it consists of transferring transferring of a data from one place to another place but while transmission it uses computing processing as well as certain com communication technologies in order to transfer a data it has different components and those are sender receiver medium message and finally protocol so see uh, this is the actual block diagram of a communication system it has a sender receiver medium message and protocol let us then uh, let's uh, go through with them in one by one. So very first is a sender. What is a sender? Uh, it is a machine or it is a device which actually a, a machine which sends a data uh, from one location to another location. Uh, that is a machine by which a data is get transmitted. Generally computer, cell phone, video camera are the examples of a sender. The next one is a receiver. Uh, sender sends the data and receiver receives the data. Along with uh, reception of a data, a receiver perform uh, task of decoding of a signals or the data if the sender sends the data by encoded form. And the examples which are available for a sender are the examples for the receiver and they are computer, cell phone, video camera and so on. Next one is the medium. Now it is a, uh, a medium is a means by which a data is get forwarded from one place to another place, another place. That means by medium sender sends the data and receiver receives the data. Next one is a message. Now what is a message? A message is a kind of information or a data which is communicated by a sender to receiver and there are multiple forms available they are text number picture sound video and any other combination of this finally there comes a protocol so protocol is nothing but uh, these are certain sets of rules uh, which must be applied in order to have a good communication or a very well communication between sender and receiver. If both parties satisfies the protocol then and then uh, sending of a data will get happen and receiver of data will get also happen. There are multiple examples of a protocol. They are UDP, TCP, IP, SMTP and further so 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 many on. So next uh, we will have uh, what are different modes of communication. Uh, there are three modes of communication available. Uh, simplex, half duplex and full duplex. Let's uh, go them one by one. So very first is simplex. So what do you mean by a simplex mode of data communication? Uh, in simplex mode of communication, uh, a sender or one uh, device just sends the data and meanwhile or at the same time receiver just, the, just receives the data and can't perform the reverse operation. That means 
sender just sends and receiver just receives at a time so uh, this transmission we can say that it is a unidirectional transmission and there are the examples of uh, simplex mode communication uh, generally uh, your keyboards monitors or displays are connected to your computer system by simplex modes of communication then there is one more example uh, what we listen uh, day by day a uh, traditional fm radios are also the examples of simplex mode now it has got some advantages and disadvantages uh, the communication channel is totally get utilized uh, by the sender because the receiver never send it back okay so it uses the full capacity of the medium and the disadvantage is uh, as it is a one way communication there is no intercommunication between devices you can see the diagram for your reference next comes half duplex now uh, in half duplex sender sends the data at one time and receiver after receiving uh, that data will again uh, send the read uh, feedback or again send the data back to the uh, sender in another time that, that means uh, two times are allotted or two time slots are allotted uh, for the sender and receiver at uh, first half sender sends the data and receiver receives and second half receiver sends the data and sender receives so very classic example for this half duplex mode is a walkie talkie uh, then cb radios okay so in walkie talkie and cb radios uh, one have to uh, send his or her signal then uh, receiver waits receiver listens then after uh, listening the message he again send back the message so what are the advantages uh, both sender and receiver can send and receive the data and that capacity uh, of medium uh, is get divided into two parts now the disadvantage is uh, while sender sends the data uh, receiver have to wait so waiting time is there or a delay occurs so uh, you will refer the diagram shown on screen for your reference next comes full duplex mode now it at full duplex mode uh, there is a full guarantee that both the devices can send and receive the data at the same time okay so sender sends and receives at a time and receiver receives and sends at a time so the examples for full duplex mode is your telephone mobile phone cell phone networks etc are the classic examples by which we can send and receive data at the same time now the advantages are uh, both the parties can talk there is no waiting time no uh, no waiting time so anyone can talk and listen uh, now the disadvantage is uh, if there is a no dedicated path uh, then the network uh, will collapse or it will get divided at a time into two and that will cause certain errors so this is all about your simplex mode then half duplex and a full duplex mode you can refer the diagrams next is the fundamentals of a computer network so up till now uh, we are we have discussed the basic things required for a computer network now we will discuss what is what do we mean by exactly a computer network so a definition of a computer network is it is a group of a two or more computing devices which is connected via a form of communication technology uh, which facilitates communication and resource sharing so see uh, in this definition two important points are highlighted and those points are the network of a computer or a computer network is specially designed uh, to have two basic things very first thing is resource sharing and second one is communication so communication and resource sharing uh, can be achieved by use of computer network and you can have a uh, need of computer network uh, in multiple forms like file folder share then hardware share application share then uh, you can have the communication in terms of email remote access etc etc now we will go through uh, to the uh, point of what are the classifications of a network now as per uh, given on your screen uh, these are the classification areas uh, 
uh, we will go through that in one by one. So very first is a PAN. Uh, PAN stands for Personal Area Network, a network uh, which is utilized for a personal usage or personal uh, use network technology used can be termed as a PAN. Bluetooth is a classic example of a personal area network. Uh, you can refer the diagram which will explain you uh, in personal area network uh, you can connect your personal devices uh, to computer network but uh, the use of that network will be on a personal basis and that will be for a room only. Next one is a CAN or a campus area network. So the large form of a PAN is a CAN. So CAN stands for campus area network uh, which is designed for a building. So PAN designed for a room but CAN designed for a building and CAN is actually coming from a network LAN that is a local area network. So there are different advantages to establish a CAN and that is it is economical uh, because we are using that network for just for a building also and which is very simple and easy to implement then it is helpful for universities for a building also. Next comes a LAN. Now the LAN is a kind of a network or a type of a network uh, which is uh, actually designed for a small physical area uh, like home, office, small group, buildings or campuses and uh, the the distance uh, given by or the distance allotted by land is up to 1 kilometer. That means uh, you can establish a land for a, a limited graphical area. Uh, so uh, we can have a land uh, for a home, office and small groups or, or a building but within same region. So the diagram will explain you uh, more things uh, as per the explanation. Next one. Uh, is uh, we will have certain advantages disadvantages next one is a man uh, man stands for metropolitan area network uh, which is a large network uh, which will cover entire city now land is for campus but man uh, is a design for within a city that means it will cover area up to 10 kilometers okay so we can come uh, we can connect multiple land by using man also so a building uh, multiple buildings uh, from same cities can get connected by using MAN. So there are uh, multiple advantages. Uh, you can refer that slide for your advantages. I am just giving you the basic things. And finally comes a VAN. That means wide area network. So uh, multiple MAN or multiple LAN can get connected together which will form a VAN. And uh, which is referred as wide area network and it is designed for multiple cities from a state from a region or from a nation also and hence the distance get covered by van is from 100 kilometers to 1000 kilometers because it can contain a continent also and uh, we can have the example of van as an internet because internet uh, can be connected by combination of multiple van, man, pan, etc. So, if you wish to connect your computer to uh, internet, then you will have to use a van. So, that's it about uh, all the basic things of LAN, man, van, pan and can. Uh, in next uh, video, we will go through with more uh, concepts in detail. Thanks a lot. Hello friends, uh, in previous video uh, we have gone through with the basic concepts of computer networking. Now this video, video will explain you what do you mean by guided transmission media. So myself Anirudh Tawale, lecturer in computer technology department. So let us start the video in detail. So uh, these are the contents of this video. Uh, in this video uh, we will have a communication media. Especially, uh, we will uh, discuss what do you mean by a guided transmission media. So, there are three forms of guided transmission media. They are twisted pair cable, coaxial cable and fiber optic cable. That means, uh, this video will explain you the communication cable media. Uh, 
so what is my what do you mean by exactly a guided media and uh, i will give you uh, the reason why this medium is a termed as a guided media uh, the name uh, guided is because the signal is guided in particular direction and that signal is guided uh, by use of a wire medium hence uh, it uses uh, electrical or optical signals uh, or electromagnetic induction signals uh, and which is get flowed from a cable or a wire and which has got certain direction and that is why it is termed as a guided media or wired media or also bowed transmission media so there are uh, three forms of a guided media twisted pair cable uh, coaxial cable and fiber optic cable twisted pair cable is again get divided into two form shielded twisted pair and unshielded twisted pair uh, let us start with first cable and that is nothing but twisted pair cable okay so as the diagram shows uh, you will have more description or more physical characteristics of a twisted pair cable uh, so it consists of insulated copper wire signal as a conductor okay and uh, which is uh, arranged in a spiral pattern now the reason uh, behind having a spiral pattern uh, because uh, it is used to decrease the crosstalk interference between adjacent pair in a cable so there are uh, at least uh, six or eight cables available and to avoid crosstalk between them uh, that those cables are wrapped in a uh, regular spiral pattern okay uh, and generally uh, the twist length varies from 5 to 15 centimeters uh, and the thick thickness of a wire uh, in a pair uh, is ranging from 0.4 to 0.9 millimeter uh, these are the basic physical description available for your twisted pair cable next we will have uh, what are the characteristics or transmission characteristics of a twisted pair cable uh, so for uh, for the case of uh, analog uh, signals uh, it amplify uh, the amplifiers are required from every 5 to 6 kilometers uh, as signal goes from uh, goes uh, weak to weaker and hence uh, we will use uh, the amplifiers for analog signal from 5 to 6 kilometers and for the digit, digital case uh, we have to use a repeater from for every 2 to 3 kilometers so see for analog analog uh, transmission the range is 5 to 6 kilometer but for digital it the range is 2 to 3 kilometers uh, then uh, the twisted pair cable are designed for a limited distance uh, then it has a very limited bandwidth uh, which is uh, approximate 1 megahertz uh, then the limited data rate uh, is get offered by uh, twisted pair cable and which is about 100 megahertz okay and uh, it may have uh, interference problem or noise problem so they are susceptible to interference and noise uh, there are different categories available uh, of utp cable and they are uh, category 3 category 4 cat 5 cat 6 cat 7 like that so the difference uh, between uh, those utp cables uh, is their twisted leg okay and generally uh, what is the transmission characteristics it supports so very first cat 3 uh, it specifies uh, the transmission characteristics characteristics up to 16 megahertz okay uh, then uh, the twist length uh, for cat 3 is 7.5 to 10 cm and for cat 4 uh, the twist length is same but the transmission characteristics goes up to 20 megahertz now uh, cat 5 uh, has twist length from 0.6 cm to 0.85 cm so it is a very shorter uh, then uh, it supports the transmission uh, characteristics up to 100 megahertz so cat 5 uh, was the best example for the network cable but nowadays uh, cat 6 and cat 7 are used uh, which are more modern cables uh, which supports uh, transmission speed up to 250 megahertz uh, and cat 6a up to 5 megahertz uh, but nowadays cat 7 is uh, used in uh, more uh, places uh, and the speed provided is 100 megahertz sorry 1000 megahertz uh, next we will have uh, what are the pros and cons that is advantages and disadvantages of utp 
or HTTP, uh, these are a cheaper cable, uh, then which are very easy to work with, uh, but it has provides a very low, uh, very low data rate uh, and which supports a very short rate. And the application areas for the UTP or HTTP or a twisted cable is uh, it, it is used to carry analog and as well as digital signals. Uh, then uh, generally it can be used for a telephone network uh, or uh, creation of a LAN. Okay, uh, then by passing a digital signals and different personal computers or a LAN uh, created computer networks can be have the examples of UTP and STP cables. After finishing uh, first cable, uh, we will discuss about coaxial cable. Now see. Uh, this is the example of a coaxial cable. Uh, now this coaxial cable has different layer. Very outer layer uh, is the termed as a plastic cover. Okay, and that within plastic uh, layer, uh, it has got uh, two insulators and two insulators separates outer conductor and the inner conductor. So inner conductor uh, can be composed of your uh, cuprous material or copper material. Okay, so. Uh, this inner conductor actually carries your signal and sometimes the shield is used for, useful for as a shield of this inner conductor. So interference is very low and that low interference is due to this outer shield or outer conductor. So these are the uh, actual physical description. So the diameter uh, of this uh, cable or coaxial cable uh, is varies from 1 to 2.5 cm. Okay, so all other things uh, are uh, mentioned on your, on your slide, you can read that in different manner. Next, uh, we will have what are the transmission characteristics. Uh, now, uh, the coaxial cable are used to transmit both analog and digital signals. Uh, then it carries a signal uh, at a high frequency, uh, which is larger than previous cable. Then very low attenuation. Uh, is there as compared to twisted pair cable uh, then it supports a higher bandwidth okay uh, then uh, it may or may not require amplifier if requires uh, then it will be available for a few kilometers after that you will have to use uh, this amplifier uh, or a repeater that repeater or amplifier usage is very low as compared to a twisted pair cable now uh, the advantages of uh, coaxial cable are uh, it carries a signal of a higher frequency then very low attenuation then higher bandwidth and the disadvantages are it is costlier than twisted pair cable then it is less flexible as compared to twisted pair cable uh, then installation cost is also high uh, then very limited size of network is available and the application area uh, of coaxial cable uh, is generally it is used for a cable TV okay so cable TV uh, is the classic example of a coaxial cable. Uh, then it can also be used for a telephone uh, or television distribution. Uh, then uh, for a telephone uh, or for a cable TV, uh, it can carry multiple 10,000 voice calls or signals simultaneously. So this is the very uh, silent uh, peculiarities or a characteristics of a coax cable. And that is why it is used for cable TV. Okay, uh, then it can be used for a short distance communication uh, or computer system links. Uh, then it can also be used for local area network. Okay, so let uh, let us we have a third cable, and that is nothing but fiber optic cable. Uh, as per shown on the diagram, there are multiple layer available. See, uh, those layers are a very inner layer is a core. Then core is surrounded by cladding. Okay, cladding has a coating. Coating is again having a strengthening fiber, and that strengthening fiber uh, is get covered by very outer layer and termed as a cable jacket. So a core uh, is a medium which actually used for transportation of a signal. Okay, and it has a very little bit size terms in uh, which are measured in a microns. Then the cladding. Uh, Cladding material surrounds the fiber core okay, uh, to avoid refraction. So whatever light is get passed via fiber optic cable, 
uh, if uh, you do not want to refract it then you have to use this cladding material then out uh, outer part of a cladding is get composed of a coating material and which uh, which ranges from 250 to 900 microns so this is the uh, size of this coating material and uh, which is get composed of a plastic material now uh, after coating there comes a strengthening fiber uh, which is used to or which is useful to protect a core against crushing uh, uh, forces and excessive tension so it avoids excessive tension and a crushing okay uh, so it keeps your uh, cable a uh, very strong uh, due to this strengthening fiber and finally the outer jacket uh, is the outermost layer uh, which uh, which is used uh, for uh, for the outer protection and it has uh, different uh, colors also uh, that colors are black yellow orange etc etc uh, but three are uh, these are the three more more most available colors orange uh, black and yellow so these are the physical characteristics or description uh, then we will have uh, what are the transmission characteristics so see uh, here is the sender uh, that sender sends uh, the actual signal uh, by using uh, this cable now see the inner uh, layer or innermost layer or the core actually carries the data in terms of a light signal and the outer uh, layer uh, of this core actually navigates uh, this light uh, signal or that data in forms of a light signal and that is get available to receiver side and that cladding actually protecting for uh, from the refraction or from outer uh, any kind of noise or any kind of interference and uh, the wave guide or the range of a wave it generally goes from the frequency uh, 1014 to 1015 hertz okay so next have what are the advantages of fiber optic cable uh, it has got a higher bandwidth uh, then it has very less signal attenuation uh, then it has the immunity over electromagnetic interference uh, then it is resist uh, resistive to corrosive materials then it is a very light weight material uh, then signal security is high available in optical fiber cable uh, then it has got also some disadvantages the, those disadvantages are uh, installation cost is very much high uh, then it requires proper maintenance uh, then uh, there is form of unidirectional light propagation obviously cost is high then we will refer or we will have what are the application areas so it is used for a long distance communication okay especially uh, for military applications or uh, home based applications also uh, then it uh, connects different metropolitan trunks uh, then uh, different subscriber loops can also be uh, get utilized or can verify by this optical fiber cable uh, and it can also be used for local area network so dear friend uh, this is all about the basics of three cables available and that is nothing but twisted pair cable, coaxial cable and fiber optic cable. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, in previous video, uh, we have discussed all about a guided transmission media. This week video will uh, explain what do you mean by unguided media. Myself Anirudh Tarole, lecturer in computer technology department. Let us start our session. So, uh, there are different uh, unguided transmission media available. Uh, so, uh, the classification of unguided transmission media is radio wave, micro wave, infrared and finally a satellite. Okay. Uh, at first, uh, we will discuss uh, what do you mean by exactly unguided transmission media and why this name unguided. See, uh, in unguided transmission media, uh, there is a medium available for transmission of a signal or a data and which is nothing but free space or air. As there is a free space and uh, air, there is a no fixed direction available to transmit a signal or a wave. And generally, uh, those waves are transmitted by means of electromagnetic signals. Okay, so electromagnetic signals are there and a free space is there or air is there hence there is a no fixed direction 
and that is why it is termed as unguided transmission media. So uh, these transmission media can be used for LAN, WAN, MAN also. Uh, these are the types radio, microwave, infrared and satellite. Uh, let us first focus what do we mean by a radio wave. So uh, a radio wave is a kind of or a type of electromagnetic radiation okay and which which is having a wavelength uh, which is equal to or which is available with a speed of a light that means uh, radio waves uh, travels uh, as equal to speed of a light okay it has a frequency uh, which ranges from uh, top 300 gigahertz to low 3, 3 kilohertz okay and the wavelength uh, supports from from 1 millimeter uh, which is a uh, 0.039 inch to 100 kilometer that is 62 miles so like all other electromagnetic waves these radio waves travel at the speed of light uh, which can easily penetrate through walls so they can go through with the walls okay uh, generally uh, 1 megahertz radio signal uh, has the wavelength to 99.8 meters uh, and uh, for a vacuum when uh, radio wave travels then it gives the speed of 299.792 to 458 meters and which is equivalent to 9835711056 foot okay and uh, which is uh, the wavelength of a wave 1 hertz radio signal so 1 hertz radio signal travels at the speed of these meters so next we will have uh, what are different frequencies available or supported by radio wave. So it supports three uh, frequencies long, shorter and much shorter. So generally uh, long wave may occur or may cover a part of earth very consistently. So uh, a part of earth uh, is get traveled by a long wave. Then shorter wave can travel ionosphere or uh, which can also travel around a world. And finally, a much shorter wave, uh, shorter wavelength, uh, which can travel uh, on a line of a sight, and which is uh, the speed of a light in a vacuum. So, very faster uh, wave, uh, very faster radio wave is much shorter wavelength wave. Uh, then there are certain types of a radio wave. First wave uh, is get created by uh, lightning or the astronomical object. And second wave is a artificially generated radio wave. Now we will see what are the application areas of radio wave. Generally, uh, radio waves are used for a fixed and mobile radio communication, which is also used for a broadcasting. Uh, most of the radars uh, utilizes radio waves for a navigation purpose. Uh, then different communication satellites can also use uses a radio wave. Uh, okay, so there are multiple applications. Uh, for a radio wave. After radio wave, there comes a microwave. Okay, uh, so the microwave uh, has a good significance uh, as uh, it is again uh, termed as uh, electromagnetic wave. So it is uh, again a part of electromagnetic wave, uh, but uh, which measures in a very small number of a centimeter, and hence the name given microwaves. Okay. So this part of radio spectrum ranges across the frequency of roughly uh, 1 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz. So this is the frequency of a microwave. Now uh, the corresponding wavelength uh, ranges from 30 centimeters top to down 1 centimeter and uh, this is the shortest uh, wavelength of this wave hence termed as a microwave. Now uh, for the line of sight of a propagation the signal does not travel along the surface of our earth and that is why uh, there is a requirement of a antennas that means uh, between at least two antennas uh, in a straight uh, line or in a straight direction microwave travels that means there must be a straight line between sender and receiver in order to transmit so uh, as the taller antenna we have more distance will get covered by this microwave and that is why we can see that uh, on a mountain or on a high building uh, we have the antennas and that antennas actually carries microwaves or microwave signals 
so uh, it has only uh, one direction signal at a time uh, the data rate uh, provided or data rate transmission provided by this microwave is 1 mbps to 10 jbps which is very high these are the application areas of a microwave uh, it is useful for uh, communication between sender and receiver which, is, which are in a straight line uh, then they can be used in a cell phones okay uh, then microwave can also be used in a for a satellite communication uh, then uh, wireless lan uh, most of the time uses microwave communication uh, the diagram uh, which is available on your screen uh, will explain you what is the position of the antenna uh, and what is uh, they travel uh, the microwave uh, by a straight line location or uh, between a transmitter and receiver there must be a straight line okay so next we have infrared communication or infrared so what is infrared or why the name infrared let us discuss at first uh, now see uh, we have a very common uh, uh, relation uh, frequency uh, is a reciprocal of uh, time okay so uh, the infrared coming from a fact that uh, it has a word ray and infra infra stands for lower or below so why it is lower to ray because generally uh, the wavelength of an infrared is longer than that of a red color okay and the frequency of infrared communication is a smaller than that of a red color and that is why uh, due to this phenomenon uh, the wavelength of this infrared communication or infrared signal uh, stays lower portion to the uh, color available in the rainbow and which has very uh, low frequency as compared to red color and that is why uh, it is says that it is below to the red and the hence name infrared okay so these infrared uh, signals uh, can't penetrate wall that is the biggest disadvantage it can't penetrate uh, wall then uh, it has a very small bandwidth and uh, very short distance uh, it covers uh, then uh, infrared communication works in a micrometer range uh, and the range is 1 to 430 terahertz so next uh, we will have uh, what are the advantages now the infrared uh, communication generally used for uh, military surveillance system uh, for a security purpose uh, then the dark dark night vision cameras or dark night uh, vision goggles uh, can also be have the application of infrared uh, then uh, remote controls uh, which are used uh, in our home uh, for a television sets dvd players etc are get composed of this infrared uh, then it can be it can be also be used for a weather forecasting and astronomy purpose uh, then it has got certain disadvantages uh, the major disadvantage is that uh, it generally uh, generates a radiation in the infrared band. That means uh, sun distracts this infrared. Uh, it can't penetrate the ball. This is the second disadvantage. And uh, large areas require multiple emitter panels, uh, which increases cost of this system. So this is all about infrared. Now we will have a last uh, unguided communication, which is termed as a satellite communication. Now. Uh, in satellite communication uh, the signals are transferred between sender and receiver okay uh, and the transmission is get happened by means of a satellite so satellite uses uh, two frequencies for uploading and for downloading so uplink means uh, when the signal goes from earth to the satellite termed as uplink signal and uh, it is uh, it has uh, of a unit 6 gigahertz okay or the wavelength is 6 gigahertz then for uh, again coming from a satellite to earth uh, it it is uh, it slows down and that uh, range goes down to 4 gigahertz okay so the diagram explains you uh, this portion is termed as uploading of a signal or uplink and this portion is termed as downloading or uh, downlink portion so it has 6 gigahertz speed and it has 1 gigahertz speeds so uh, this satellite uh, can perform the task of antenna as well as repeater at a time 
Now generally, uh, to cover uh, a earth, uh, we require uh, three satellites. So uh, three satellites can cover total earth surface at a time. And generally, uh, there are multiple uh, uh, satellites available with their ranges. Uh, those ranges are uh, with uh, earth orbit is of 705 kilometers. Uh, then the globally positioned satellites having uh, the distance uh, 12,400 miles and the weather satellite has the distance 36 km from Earth's surface. These all the distances are from Earth's surface, surfaces. Now finally, uh, we conclude uh, with the applications of a satellite. Now the applications of satellites are, it is used for satellite television purpose, uh, then different digital cinemas, cricket matches, different live things can also be available to you by means of this satellite. Uh, then different satellite radios can also be used, satellite mobiles also be used and satellite internet access can also be uh, used as the application area. So that's it for the unguided media. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the course Basics of Computer Network. Uh, in this session, uh, we will discuss about what are different network topologies. Myself, Anirudha Tarole, lecturer in Computer Technology Department. So, let us have our session. Now, uh, in this session, uh, we will discuss about uh, the definition of a topology and uh, which are the uh, types available for the topology. Generally, bus, ring, star, mesh and finally, tree or hybrid. So let us go through uh, with the definition uh, of a topology. Uh, there are multiple uh, definitions available, uh, but the definition uh, which is easy to keep in mind is uh, the second definition. The way in which computers are connected in a network is called as topology. So this is very simple and plain definition to keep in mind. Uh, it is generally, uh, it says that uh, it is, it provides you a way by which different computers are connected in a network. So how computers connected in a network uh, and their way is get expressed by this term topology. There are multiple definitions. Uh, we have those definitions on screen. You can refer any one of them. Uh, let us start the first topology, bus topology. Okay. So what happens at bus topology? Uh, what are the advantages, disadvantages and uh, what is their classifier? What is their uh, architecture? Let us uh, go there in one by one. As the uh, diagram shows, see, uh, the diagram shows uh, there is the distribution or connection of a computer is one after another. Okay. Uh, there is uh, one starting system and one end system. So, uh, this might be your start of your system and this might be uh, of your end of a system. So, in a, in a bus topology, uh, start is different system and end is different system and all those systems are connected one after another in a serial manner. Now this kind of topology is an outdated uh, topology uh, which is uh, very rarely used in nowadays computer network and that was used uh, in history uh, because that was very inexpensive to use or that was have different, uh, different advantages. Let us have uh, different advantages of this bus topology uh, easy to install uh, then very low cost is available to establish this kind of topology uh, then uh, it it is very easy to add uh, or uh, delete or add or remove a system uh, within network uh, then uh, it is it can be created or it is available for a small kinds of a network so these are the advantages now we will focus what disadvantages it have. So it is an outdated technology at first. Uh, then if any cable breaks, see if any cable breaks out of this cable, then every other system will collapse because this is connected serially. So if this, this point breaks, then rest of the uh, systems get, get collapsed. If this system breaks, then rest of all those systems get uh, collapsed. So uh, due to this, it is very difficult to troubleshoot from where uh, the problem uh, appears and uh, it is not uh, manageable for a large network so it is unmanageable 
for a large size lip networks. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of bus topology. Next, after bus, we have a ring topology. See the architecture of this ring topology. Uh, in bus topology, uh, the first and last system was a different, but in ring topology, the first and last system is the same system. And that is why it form a ring like structure and hence the name given ring topology. Okay, so this is nothing but the classic example of a ring topology where first computer is get connected to another computer, another, next, next, next and finally last computer is again connected to this first computer. So how it works? The working of uh, this uh, ring network or ring topology uh, is on the basis of a token. See, a token uh, is uh, generally uh, made available for uh, sending and receiving the messages. So a system which wanted to send a data generally uh, creates a token. Now it uses a token and it identify all other system that I have a token and now it is my time to send the data to the rest of the system. Until now all those systems get at the weighted mode. Uh, this system sends the data to every other system or the system which he wants and after sending a data let us assume uh, this system wanted to send the data to this system. Now he will uh, have a token within that token it will send the data and that data will get forwarded to this system only because rest of the system will check that data is not for me but that is for the another system. Now this system will have a token after getting the data it will empty the token and will forward it to this token to original system and rest of time all the system will have a waited time. So this is the working nature of a ring topology. Now we have the advantages, uh, it is very easy to uh, install, then uh, cost is usually low, uh, then uh, it can add or remove the system uh, in easy manner and it is designed for small network. So what are the advantages for bus topology also applicable for ring topology. Next we will have uh, what are the disadvantages, also same disadvantages are focused over here of, as per bus topology and they are, it is a out of data technology, if cable break then whole network collapse, then it is very difficult to troubleshoot and it is unmanageable for large network. Next topology uh, we have generally termed as a star topology. Okay, So see uh, this is the graphical representation of a star topology. Now what happens in star? Uh, for a star topology there is a centrally placed device. We can refer this as a centrally placed device because this device is connected to every other system which is available to that network and generally that device might be hub or a switch okay generally hub or switches uh, are generally used as a central place device to form a star network or to form a star topology now see this uh, system is connected to every another system and that is why a data is get bypassed from this centrally placed device. So if this system wanted to communicate to this system then a message will get forwarded to this centrally placed device and finally that message will get forwarded to this uh, required system also. So that is the working of a star topo logic. Now the advantages are uh, it is very easy to install uh, which is advantage uh, which is common advantage for board, uh, all the three topology, bus ring and now star, then uh, it can easily add or remove the devices. See, uh, I can uh, add here one more system or I can remove from a system from uh, this way. Uh, now next, uh, one uh, break does not affect whole the network. So if uh, this system or this cable get break, then it will not cause effect to another system. Next one. Uh, it is very easy to troubleshoot because every system is connected to central place device. Then it is widely used and it has a centralized management system. Due to this central processing system, uh, it is get controlled and managed by or it controls and manages all other devices. Then disadvantages, uh, cost is generally high as compared to bus and ring topology. Uh, then 
uh, if you have only one central device and if it is get uh, fail then break it will break all over the network so uh, this is this will cause to break off uh, all other network or whole network if this central replace device break now after start topology we have a next topology and that is referred as mesh topology now see uh, mesh topology the advantage or a criteria uh, or the philosophy of a mesh topology is each and every system is connected to each and every another system available in a network so if uh, if i suppose i i am having this system within network and total systems are uh, then six system then this system will get connected to every another five system within a network via a cable uh, which is actually uh, practically impossible but this is a theoretical concept and hence uh, we will continue this concept uh, the primary advantage of uh, this kind of topology is high availability and uh, generally uh, the the number of cables to need to form a mesh topology uh, can be calculated by a formula it has got one formula that formula is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 where this n is nothing but number of nodes available or number of computers available within system let us have an example uh, if i have n as a 6 if i have a node or computer as a 6 then how many cable i will have see the calculation is like that using this formula uh, number of cable or edges uh, required is uh, n that n stands for uh, 6 over here 6 into n minus 1 that is 6 minus 1 5 so 5 into 6 30 divided by 2 30 divided by 2 it gives 15 cables so to to connect uh, these 6 nodes to every other node we will have 15 cables so these are the advantages of this mesh topology uh, it is extremely fault tolerant because high availability uh, is available every system is connected to every another system and that is why fault is very uh, not available uh, in this kind of topology uh, then uh, if any component fail then it will never alter it will never affect rest of the uh, network or environment because alternative alternative is available and that is why uh, each and every uh, computer is connected to another computer by multiple ways and that is why uh, more cables are available and hence there is a no fault then expansion and modification in topology can be done without disturbing or disrupting other nodes so we can uh, expand or modify rest of the network uh, in a topology uh, by means of this topology because uh, it has multiple lines so these are the disadvantages uh, which is expensive as we have uh, multiple edges or multiple lines uh, then it is very difficult to implement practically uh, then it is difficult to administrator and uh, finally it is very difficult to troubleshoot finally we have a topology tree topology it can be also referred as a hybrid topology so a hybrid or a tree topology uh, is simply a combination of every or another kind of any two or more topologies so if we connect a uh, bus with a star star with a ring or ring uh, with a may uh, any other kind of topology then we will have a tree or a hybrid topology so it is nothing but a combination of other topologies so this diagram shows uh, it has a three star network see star one star two and star three now three star networks are connected via in a serial manner so this is a star bus star topology so we can uh, name it as star bus star topology like that you can have star ring star or star ring bus or bus ring star like that so it has tremendous advantages uh, uh, that is why it is get created by multiple sorts of or multiple other topologies so it is extremely reliable then scalable flexible and effective so that's all that's it for all uh, the topology available in networking thank you everyone hello everyone uh, welcome uh, to the course basics of computer network uh, 
in this video uh, we will discuss uh, which are different network connecting devices myself aniruddha talole lecturer in computer technology department so let us start our session uh, in this session uh, we will discuss uh, following different network connecting devices such as hub switch router repeater bridge gateway modem we will just have the introductory part uh, so before start uh, to the navigation of different networking devices uh, let let us first discuss uh, what is the role of network connecting devices actually uh, uh, these are the devices uh, which supports triple uh, a that means authentication authorization and accounting so uh, different protocols and those triple a uh, can be verified by using networking devices uh, then uh, it protect protects uh, existing investment uh, then uh, we will go through with each devices one by one so very first is a hub device so hub is a device uh, which is generally called as a uh, broadcasting device so as per the diagram uh, giving or displaying on your screen uh, this is the location of a hub uh, which connects uh, different nodes or different computers see uh, for this hub a message coming to this hub uh, is get forwarded to each and every node so if node 1 sending message uh, to any computer then by default this hub will broadcast this message to node 2 3 and 4 and that is why uh, it is says that uh, it is a broadcasting device so most of the formation of a lan uh, hub are generally preferred uh, then it organizes the cables uh, and it is generally relays the signals to other media segments. Uh, next, what are the categories? There are three categories of hub, passive, active and intelligent. So let us move to the first category, passive hub. So what is passive hub? Uh, it simply combines the signals of a network segment. Okay, uh, And there is a no signal processing and that is why uh, it never generates a signal and no, never process a signal and that is why it is termed as a passive hub. Next one is the active hub. Now as compared to passive, uh, active hub are more intelligent and more active because uh, it may or uh, it, it always uh, perform the task of signal processing and regeneration and that is why it is termed as active hub. Okay, uh, uh, but the third part intelligent hub uh, perform not only the task of a regeneration but it, it is somewhat says that it is an intelligent hub because uh, it can perform task of uh, traffic control also or a uh, traffic management also and that is why uh, path selection task is get performed by intelligent hub so more detail uh, you can read uh, by those slides I am just giving you the basic concepts of uh, basic networking devices so extra information is available on your slides. After completing uh, hub, next comes switch. Okay, so switch is a more more look like a hub, uh, but uh, hub is a broadcasting device, but switch is a unicast device. So let us discuss how a switch works. See, uh, now this node wanted to send a data. Okay, uh, now if this node sends a data via switch now uh, this switch will uh, find out what is the mac address or what is the exact ip address of the receiver machine and uh, instead of forwarding uh, that data or that traffic to every each and every uh, node it just uh, sends that uh, information to the distant node or the required node and that is why switch are more popular and more intelligent than hub because switch not just the unicast a data but also perform task of traffic management uh, and a data management in very well manner as compared to hub and uh, that is why uh, to form a LAN uh, as compared to hub switches are preferred now next comes a router okay so that router operates at the network layer of uh, OSI reference model uh, generally a router connects uh, LAN and WAN. So if uh, we have a router, uh, 
uh, see uh, to the diagram if we have a router uh, then that router uh, can connect uh, a network from a personal area network from a lan to uh, a wide area network that is a more uh, tremendous network as compared to lan so to connect this similar network we have a router so router are the devices which help determining the best path so the very important task performed by router to finding uh, what is the best best path available in order to send a data so for example if uh, this system wanted to send a data to uh, a system from another network okay then this router will find out how many routes are available okay then after final after finding the route it will finalize the best route and which is a shortest or shortest path uh, by the by means of the shortest path uh, this router will send the data from this system to the distant system so this is a location of a router within your network it connects two different networks a lan to wan or a man to wan now uh, there are uh, two types of a router uh, generally uh, static and a dynamic so static router uh, is a kind of a router or is a device uh, in which the system network administrator uh, ma ma manually configures a red network router so uh, in static router the administrator needs uh, to configure uh, those router stat statically and that is why this term as a static router and second type of router is a dynamic router uh, which is a networking device which enables a router to select path according to real real time logical network layout changes that means uh, the address finding uh, shortest path finding and ip address finding uh, is a uh, are the kinds of a task uh, which is get performed by dynamically okay so dynamic router performs those tasks so these are the two types of router then let us we have what are the functions get performed by router so router uh, as uh, we have uh, discussed previously it finds or chooses the best path for packet forwarding then uh, router can read the complex network address in a packet and uh, solve them in easy manner uh, then it uh, it uh, usually works at the network layer of osr reference model uh, then it is uh, it efficiently Uh, direct the packets from one network to another and reduces and avoids the traffic okay so like that there are multiple advantage uh, you can go those advantage by using this slide next uh, we will have different advantages as we have discussed then what are the disadvantages uh, it is very complex to maintain the router uh, then there are certain security risks and routers are more expensive so these are the negligible uh, disadvantages uh, as compared to disadvantages advantages are more and hence routers are tremendously used uh, next device is a repeater now what is use of repeater as the name suggest repeat something so what it repeats it repeats the signal so where the signal goes to the weaker portion or signal goes weak or weaker at that location repeaters are desirable now see uh, in a network medium uh, this is uh, let us say this is a sender and this is a receiver now uh, the there might be a more distance available between this sender and receiver and at this location uh, the sender's uh, data or uh, their signal uh, goes in a weak manner now this repeater will increases or boosts uh, those signal and regenerate and repeat the signal and forward it to Uh, next uh, route or next networking uh, environment so this is the task of repeater which repeats or boost the weak signal uh, next device is a bridge device now see uh, bridge are the devices uh, which are uh, generally used to connect one network with another network now uh, bridges can connect similar kind of a network more uh, in more convenient manner uh, so uh, or we can say that uh, two or more network segment can get connected via bridges also so bridge can connect similar network also and it can connect 
two or more segments of a network. Okay, uh, it forwards the packet uh, which are for the exact destination. That means it find out the root, exact root or and the shortest root. Then uh, it filters the data traffic. Uh, then uh, it reduces the amount of a traffic. Then in, it uh, also inspects the in, uh, incoming traffic uh, in order to find out uh, whether uh, there is a fraudulent act or not. Uh, then uh, a bridge operates in the both physical and data link layer of OSI reference model. Now uh, a bridge can check the most important physical or a MAC address, media access control address, uh, source and destination uh, in order to send and receive data at the perfect location. Okay. Uh, now uh, we will have uh, simple advantages uh, so very first advantage of bridge is uh, it is uh, simple and significant uh, then it reduces uh, the amount of a network traffic uh, then uh, it it makes possible to isolate a busy network from a non busy one that means uh, it connects a part of a network isolately next uh, we have uh, a gateway device now see uh, a gateway can connect uh, one uh, one part of a network or one kind of a network to another kind of a network. So like router, uh, a gateway uh, is a actually uh, it is a logical device uh, not available at a time uh, physically. It is a logical device or it is a protocol converter. Okay, so it enables communication between different networks. So different kinds of a network are get connected by using gateway. So as the figure says, uh, one kind of SNA network uh, is get connected to the network network. Now these are the two different networks. One is a SNA type of network and second is a network type of network. Now those two different networks are get connected via gateway. Okay. So this is a gateway device. Next we have a model. The log form of a model is a modulator demodulator or modulate modulation demodulation the function of conversion of uh, modulation uh, modulator to demodulator and again demodulator to mod modulator uh, is get performed by a device model generally uh, this is the location of a model as per the diagram uh, it is attached to your computer system uh, which actually converts a digital signal to analog signal at the sender side okay and at the receiver side it again reconverts those analog signal to back to digital signal. So that means uh, this is termed as a demodulation purpose or modulation purpose and this is termed as demodulation purpose. So a device which perform task of modulator and this demodulator termed as modem device. And finally uh, we have a last device termed as NIC network interface card there are multiple names available to nic uh, network interface card network adapter lan adapter lan card etc so uh, a device which actually connects your physical cable or a cable physically to your computer system to the rest of network can be termed as nic so without nic uh, no network connection or no computer uh, can be connected to network connection so you have a network connection due to NIC card or NIC or NIC adapter. So it provides a physical link or connectivity between your computer and rest of a computer network. So computer and computer network get connected via NIC. So it creates sends and receives frames. Okay. Then it manages access to medium and it controls flow of a data between computer and physical medium. So that's it about uh, all the components, basic components uh, which are required in order to form a computer network. Uh, thank you very much.